physical training, self-defense training, firearms training, situational awareness, and the warrior mindset. Welcome to the Condition One Podcast. This is a podcast. This is a podcast. We're working about it. Welcome to the Condition One Podcast. This is a podcast where we'll be talking about being ready. We'll also be speaking to victim survivors of physical encounters, how they dealt with the aftermath physically, mentally, and spiritually. Welcome to the Condition One Podcast with me, your host, John Riddle. I'd like to thank our sponsor, the Crestwood Technology Group, CTG, supplies the defense and aviation industries with critical parts and materials designed to keep fleets and systems operational, ready, and safe. Check out the Crestwood Technology Group at ctgnow.com. And welcome to the Condition One Podcast with me, your host, John Riddle. And today we are speaking with Brandy Spurley. Uh, Brandy is a veteran's wife. She's a mom of four, and she is pretty active in the... uh, Training. She's trained in martial arts on and off her whole life. Um, everything from Taekwondo to Kali to Jeet Kune Do. And uh, pretty active uh, growing up hunting. And now she is into the shooting sports uh, with handguns. She studied wildlife and fisheries, ecology, and game management at Texas A&M University. She's a former personal trainer and yoga instructor. Uh, she had an incident where uh, at a gas station that uh, we would like to talk to you about a little bit, okay, Um, where you had a a, a physical attack, and that drove you, got your mindset in to starting to train with firearms. So uh, her training outlet is with American Gun Chick and her Honey Badger USA program, which I thank you for giving me her name. I reached out to her, tried to get her on this weekend, but they were tied up with a class, so we're going to try and get them on the the next go-around. you know, she, she trains with American Gun Chick and, and her Honey Badger USA program that encourages women to train in defensive firearms techniques. Um, and because of her altercation and gr- growing up in her childhood experiences, uh, she wanted to make it her mission to help women become more self-confident, more self-reliant on their abilities to take care of themselves through training and situational awareness practices. So without further ado, welcome, Brandy. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me, John. Um, a firearms shooting self-defense enthusiast. Uh, so we're going to get to that. But what I want to know, uh, just to, as an icebreaker, and I ask everybody this question, okay? And that is, uh, what is the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up? And how, what does your normal day look like? So first thing before I get out of bed, you know, thank the good Lord that I have another morning. Um, Definitely give gratitude for everything. Um, I usually get up with my husband in the morning. So um, usually about 430, I get up, um, make him breakfast, cook his lunch, um, get him out the door. And then if it's a school day, we have um, all of our kids are staggered. So they all leave at different times. So it's making lunches, it's getting kids ready, it's taking kids to school. Um, by the time we get back, that's my time. I like to always do a little meditation and reflection um, of a time where I have my breakfast. I take all of my supplements, um, have a little me time. I do some reading, always try to read in the morning. And then um It kind of, it really depends on how my day is, if I have anything planned, Um, the chores start, you know, the household stuff. Um, I find time for a workout, try to get in a morning workout, and then just see where the day goes from there. Excellent. Excellent. Seems like a common theme for everybody uh, that I've interviewed that do what we do, you know. It's, uh, we get up in the morning, first thing we do is, uh, you know, be thankful for having that day, right? And uh, oh, exactly. And getting up and, and moving forward uh, with what we have to do. You have a busy day, uh, no doubt. So, how old were you when you started training in the martial arts? 
I want to say I was around eight. Um, I started taking Taekwondo. Um, I took it for about six years. Well, maybe about five years. I know I reached the rank of brown belt. Um, my instructor, who I was very close with at the time, um, stopped teaching. And it kind of devastated me. So, um, you know, I was still a kid. I kind of stayed away for a while. I did a lot of tournament fighting. So I took a break from martial arts until probably when I became a young adult and about to go off to college. Um, I started taking a little bit more uh, classes here and there just to be safe, you know, while I was going to school. And it's just kind of progressed from there. Okay. Tournament fighting? Uh, yes, when I was younger. Um, when I did BJJ, I, I fought in a couple tournaments, but um, I won't be competing in tournaments anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've had some injuries, so from here on out, any uh, training that I do would be you know, strictly for self-defense purposes. There you go. Okay. And you're, you're from your Taekwondo, was that point fighting that you did? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, learning the martial arts, was that for fitness, mm-hmm. just for the sake of learning it, or was it for self-protection? When I was younger, um, believe it or not, it was actually for self-protection. Um, I grew up in kind of a, actually kind of a violent household, but from that, my dad was a huge advocate for taking care of yourself, defending ourselves. That was one thing that was always ingrained in us as children is to know how to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. So we, I was put in Taekwondo being the girl in the family um, to make sure I had a way to defend myself as it progressed. It's always been from a self-defense standpoint for me. Um, there's other things that I do to work out, but for me, any type of martial arts is strictly, a, um, it's a self-defense thing for me, for sure. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you grew up in Texas. Correct. Obviously. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, what was your childhood like growing up in Texas? Um, it, you know, typical, I think childhood for, you know, where I lived, we, um, grew up hunting. Um, my dad was kind of a jack of all trades, master of nine. Uh, I worked hard when we were kids. Um, big difference from kids today. Um, I, I remember as early on as I could, you know, my dad was for one thing, a carpenter going to work with him during the summers doing roofing. Um, I was the oldest of five kids. So there was a lot of stuff for me to do around the house. Um, it was a rough childhood. Like I said, I kind of grew up in a violent home. Um, so that's probably a whole other show, another podcast episode (laughs) to dive folds into that. But, um, we really grew up with kind of a hard mindset, um, kind of a, you know, take care of yourself. You earn your way. And I think that's helped me a lot and helped me with my mindset today. Okay. All right. Um, you, you talked about in your, in your bio that you had an incident take place at a gas station. Uh, did this, and this incident kind of catapulted you into training in a different venue and that's the firearm side of the house. Correct. Um, can you tell us about that incident? Do you want to talk about that? So, sure. Um, this was probably about six years ago and, um, I was actually dropping my daughter off at, um, mass. So I dropped her off at the church. I was on my way back and I needed to stop for gas. Um, I was actually on my way to one of my um, Jeet Kune Do classes and I, I pulled up into this gas station, totally, you know, oblivious, you know, my first mistake to what was going on. Um, so I pulled up and I got out of my car and this other vehicle had like pulled up beside me. So this lady gets out irate and immediately off the bat, I noticed that she's, she's inebriated or she's, on some kind of drug she was clearly not in her right mind so she starts approaching me and apparently they had been waiting to pull up to that gas pump and i just you know not paying attention just pulled in was going to get out and go about my business so she starts approaching me screaming and hollering he said i could clearly tell that she was not in her right mind so i you know tried to de-escalate the situation told her look you know i'm sorry i'll i'll let you have your gas pump i'll go find somewhere else and 
she continued to approach me rapidly. So here's where I made my mistake in the fact that I turned my back and started walking towards my vehicle. When I did, she accelerated and she ran up behind me and grabbed me from behind. So as she grabbed me from behind, I want to, you know, it was just my instincts that kicked in. So I turned around and um, hit her with the elbow across the face. As she spun me around, I used that momentum connected with an elbow across her face. Busted, immediately I see blood, busted her mouth, her nose, everything, busted my elbow on her teeth. And she still, I mean, it stopped her for maybe a few seconds. And you could just tell at that point, I knew that she was on something. This was not a fight that I was wanted to be in. You know, I was just trying to stop her advancement. Um, she kind of stopped for a minute and then she started coming at me again. That's when um, I did like a little front kick, created some space, got in my vehicle as soon as I could. And about that time, in the vehicle that she was in, three other guys got out once they noticed the physical altercation was going on. So I immediately just left the scene. Um, it could have been a very intense situation, you know. Sure trying to fight someone who was on methamphetamines, it's, you know, never a good situation. Mm -hmm. Plus I was outnumbered three other probably, you know, messed up people were getting out of the vehicle as well. It would have been an extremely dangerous situation. So that is what got me thinking, you know, I don't care if I was Bruce Lee, I would have had a hard time sure. in that situation. Let me interrupt you for and one second. It, Did, was okay. there other people around there that were witnessing this? Did anybody offer any type of, assistance to you there was not and that's probably my other mistake i stopped at a gas station where there was maybe one other vehicle it was kind of on a side road it was not well lit there were no cameras um it was a bad place i, I, I shouldn't have stopped there in the first place that you know was my other mistake okay. so um yeah nobody else around okay okay so you jump back in your car, you get out of there. You, you escape Correct. that danger. Okay. Uh, so now you're thinking about this. Okay. You're at home. You're thinking about you have an injury. Um, you're at home. You went to the hospital, I take it, or get medical care? I did or, not. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. Um, so, we so, contacted the police after that, uh -huh. and, you know, there was really nothing that they could do. At right. that point, mm -hmm. you know, we had both left the scene. There was no video cameras. So um, I just cleaned my wound very thoroughly, made sure, you know, because I'm pretty sure it hit her mouth and it was her tooth that okay. had busted my elbow. Yeah. So now you're at home cleaning up from this. What's your mindset? What's your, what's your, what are you, what's going through your head at this point? First of all, was complete disbelief. Um, disbelief, I put myself in that situation. Disbelief that, I mean, you know, they always say, you think this could never happen to me. And I honestly, after leaving that scene, just could not believe that that had just happened to me. Um, and all I kept thinking about was, I'm lucky that I made it home to see my kids. What if I would have had my kids with me? Um, what if those guys would have got out of the car differently? And I just knew at that point that I'd put myself in an extremely dangerous situation. And had I not been able to get out of there, it would have ended up a lot worse. I knew I had to find another way, you know, I needed more training. I needed to be, become more situationally aware. And that is what prompted me to start actually carrying a firearm with me. Okay. So why the decision of a firearm versus pepper spray? Um, you know, you have the two, you have less lethal in pepper spray and you have a firearm. So why the choice of a firearm? Well, you know, I'll, I still do this. I carry pepper spray as well as whether, you know, and also other self-defense tools. Mm -hmm. But in that situation, and I'm not saying that I'm, you know, a strong person or that I'm deadly. But when you knock somebody across the face and it busts their nose, busts their mouth, and it doesn't even face them, mm -hmm. you know, you have to wonder what pepper spray would have done. Mm -hmm. um, would I had enough time with, you know, all of them coming out at me? And there's a time and a place for pepper spray and there's a time and a place for something else. Okay. And I honestly think that in that situation, um, if it would have progressed, the firearm probably would have been my best choice there. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, 
So tell me about your, your journey into the firearms training. So I actually, when we went to the gun store to look for, um, you know, what, I wanted to figure out what kind of gun I wanted. I talked to a lot of people, um, wanted to make sure I got the right fit. So the actual gun store that I went into, um, I started to become friends with the lady that worked there and, um, who by the way is an excellent shooter. And, um, when I, I took my LTC class there with them as well, um, we became friends and through her is she's the one who introduced me to, um, Brickell American gun chick. Um, she had taken her class before, um, and she, you know, outside of going to the range for a few times before that class, having her help me, um, and then my LTC class, I'd had zero, uh, pistol training. You know, I grew up shooting rifles and, you know, hunting, but as far as pistols went or defensive firearm trains, I had had none. So, um, I started taking classes with Brickell. Um, I've taken, I want to say five classes with her already. Um, and I've taken a, a tactical rifle class with another guy and I really don't have any plans of stopping. Um, I want to keep continuing taking classes, but so far that's, that's, you know, outside of watching, you know, there's some YouTube videos here and there that I watch, um, try to learn different things, but hands-on training has been, um, American gun chick and her honey badger program. Okay. That group, that's a national based group. Honey Badger USA, are they nationally based? They're all over the country? Yes, yes, yes. She does travel. Um, I think she mainly travels throughout uh, the South and Midwest, but she does travel and do classes. Okay. Do they have, uh, like here in in, in Florida, I, I work with a group, and they're the, called the Well-Armed Women. And it's Well-Armed, mm -hmm. it, it's Broward County, which is a county south of me. And it's the Well-Armed Women of Broward County. And it's a it's a chapter of a nationally based women's only firearms training group. Okay. And I've done actually next month, um, I'm getting ready to do a two day class with them on handgun retention here in my, in my gym. And then the next day we're going out to the range and we're going to shoot all day. Uh, and I do lectures for them. Uh, for, we just did a, I just did a uh, rifle, familiarization lecture with them but uh this this group is a nationally based group also and that's what i was wondering if if they have do they have chapters in honey no Biden? she doesn't no okay no um yeah um she's you know i'm i want i you would have to ask her more about that mm -hmm. um i know that she's just right now she travels um and sets up different classes i know her self she's done just massive amounts of training, you know, mm -hmm. um, part of her website and everything, and part of her journey that she started on YouTube. Um, she was a female who knew nothing about weapons, nothing about, and she started learning. So she started going to all these training and she documented everything gotcha. from, you know, not knowing anything about firearms to, you know, the accomplished person that she is today. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, Texas open carry. Or, or is Texas or do I open carry? Uh, yes, is Texas. Texas is open. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What do you think about open carry versus concealed? What's your opinions? I believe it's a personal preference. And my personal preference is to conceal. Um, I honestly feel like whenever I open carry, and maybe this is because I'm a woman, that I create, I mean, I'm, I make myself more of a target. Okay. Um, you know, and all the, some of the firearm training videos that I've watched, you know, they'll teach, they'll teach you, you know, if somebody is well-trained and they walk into a place, the first person that they're going to want to, you know, take out is the person with the firearm. Yep. As a female, I do not want to make myself a target for a guy who maybe doesn't have a firearm and sees me walking down the street and says, Hey, all I got to do is get the jump on her and get her firearm from her. Um, the element of surprise, especially for women, because most of the time men are going to assume that you are not a threat is to be concealed. So for me, that is a huge game changer. Um, I feel like it's just another tool that you don't know that I am carrying. Excellent. Excellent answer. I like that. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Okay, so you know, you carry concealed. You'd rather be a good witness than somebody who's going to jump into something. But you always have that that choice, right? So correct. You're in, what part of Texas are you in? I'm just north of Houston. Okay. So is it traditionally warm there all the time? It is. Okay. We we don't we don't have much of a fall or winter. Okay. So correct. so where I'm going with this is dressing for success. Okay. If it's hot or it's warm, uh like down here in South Florida, all right, um uh, people wear shorts all the time. Um, unless they're working and they're in, in a business, then they're, you know, ladies especially are wearing dresses. We've got a lot of fitness people who wear the, uh, you know, the, the yoga pants and such. Um, how do you carry, how do you dress for success in carrying concealed where nobody can see it, all right, in your daily so, life? Correct. Since I'm beginning, you know, my, um, my journey with all of this, um, my plan is to get more ways to conceal carry. Um, right now I just have an inside the waistband holster. I want to get, you know, maybe a belly band, um, a thigh band, something like that. As of right now, to me, um, I dress close to, you know, as close to what I want to, as I can and still be able to carry. Um, to me, I would rather be able to carry confidently and conceal carry, you know, than I would wear whichever, you know, whatever outfit I'd think I want to wear. So right now it's me making a choice over, I need to dress to conceal as opposed to, you know, how can I, I, I want to wear this outfit. Let me find a way to make it work. I'll eventually get there once, you know, I get more ways to conceal a weapon. But for right now, I try to just dress the best way I possibly can so that I feel safe. Okay. Excellent. Um, there's a lot of women out there who are hesitant Okay, uh, to learn about firearms, they may have some fear. Uh, for that matter, there's a lot of guys out there too that I've come across. You know, they're, they're, they fear the firearm; uh, they don't want anything to do with it. Um, how would you educate the ladies that you come across um, and get them interested enough to take that first step to learn? So, this funny story is I actually just talked to a lady out of buying a firearm the other day at Academy, we were there looking at some accessories. Her husband was there trying to get her to buy like this little snub nose 38 revolver. Okay. The woman was already kind of hesitant. I don't like firearms, you know, and I was like, you know, I interjected here because I've seen an opportunity and I said, may I suggest something? Take your wife to a gun range, let her rent different firearms, see which one she is comfortable with shooting. Because a trend that I've seen taking classes and being around, you know, women who I have this gun or I have that gun and no offense to you men out there is that a lot of men will want to go pick out a gun for their wife, yep. their girlfriend yep. and think, Oh, I need this small gun because this is easy for her to carry. Mm -hmm. When in reality, you, she's getting something way snappy. She's mm -hmm. not going to be able to manage recoil. Um, semi-automatic, she's not going to be able to manipulate slides or mag releases or anything like that. So mm -hmm. automatically she's going into it and fighting a losing battle. She's going to be discouraged. She's going to be scared. She's not going to have the accuracy that she wants. It's just going to automatically be turned away from shooting firearms. So what I tell any woman is, you know, consider that when you go to buy a firearm, you pick a gun that you are comfortable with, a gun that fits in your hand. Smaller is not always better. Um, go to a firing range, rent a weapon, find out what you're comfortable with shooting, um, what you can manipulate. And then once you get it, train, um, especially for women, because the key to training and what I figured out is the more comfortable with that weapon that you are, the less scared of it you are. So if you're scared of this gun and you go out and you only shoot, you know, a box of rounds through it, or you only shoot it enough to, you know, take your LTC class or, you know, what have you, you're not going to be comfortable with that weapon. You're going to flinch. You're not going to know how to manage it or manipulate it. So the more rounds that you can put through that gun and the more training that you can get, the more comfortable you're going to get with it. Okay. Excellent. Great answer. Um, last question for you. In your opinion, do you feel that the martial arts background that you have, in addition to your firearms training, right, 
gives you an upper hand in your personal protection. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, I think being a mother also is what changed everything for me. Um, it's not about you anymore once you get to that point. Right. Um, not only do you, are you going to have your kids with you at some point, but you also need to be able to go home to your kids. Mm-hmm. So, and here's the thing about being a woman is that you're going to get overpowered by a man if he attacks you. I mean, this is just something that you need to accept. Um, that's why I encourage different types of martial arts training. You need to know how to get yourself out of a situation. And, you know, 90% of the time you're going to end up on the ground. So you need to know how to defend yourself there. Um, without proper training, e- everything scary that's going to happen, just like what happened to me, is going to happen in close quarters. If you are not elite trained in defensive firearms training and you can't, you know, know how to do close quarters combat, it's the fight's going to end up, you know, um, physical. So I really feel like a strong martial arts background is going to give you just that much more confidence. Um, and then, you know, being a mom and being, you know, um, a mother, there are times like when I have to go pick my child up from school, I can't carry on a school campus. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you can't carry a lot of times in a lot of places where you have to go with your kids. So you need a second line of defense. Um, a lot of women are uncomfortable with carrying on their bodies. They want to carry in their purse, carry this, carry that. You need a backup plan. Um, your gun can get taken away. Your gun can misfire. If you don't know how to handle that, if it gets knocked on the ground because you get attacked from behind, you need to have a second line of defense. And I believe that martial arts gives you that confidence as well that when you're walking down that street or when you're com- you know confronted by something, you or someone, you have that confidence to say, okay, in this situation, this is what I'm going to do. And in that comes a different type of calm. Um, you're not going to panic as much. You'll be able to have a better mindset and handle the situation a lot more if you can go into it with confidence. Okay. Do you train, uh, with another group of women? Do you have friends that you train with that you go out regularly with, or how often do you train with firearms? With firearms? Yes. Um, I go out with a group of women, um, my fellow honey badgers, um, here lately we've been training, uh, taking classes or doing some type of training together about, probably about twice a month. Um, I'm fixing to start getting in some more, um, just regular range time. I want to go back and work on my fundamentals some more. I feel like they need some work. I've done a lot of defensive training. I want to go back to, um, work on my, my fundamentals as well. Um, and then I go with my husband as well and we just go to the range and shoot. So it's, it's a little bit of both, but I really do love that camaraderie that I have with the other women. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very empowering to do this with other women. And I think also, you know, a lot of women, I, I, I highly encourage women's training for the simple fact that a lot of women are intimidated when they go into a class and there's men there. Um, that's, that's just the nature of it. You know, you're going to be more confident around other women. You're going to be more comfortable. And I believe that's probably the best way for most women to start off training is to find a female uh, class to go to. Okay. Excellent. Um Excellent answers. I appreciate you. Do you, are you planning on running a school or starting to teach on your own? Uh, there's been um, some discussion. I know that um, I'm not sure, you know, the complete direction that they want to head with American Gun Chick. But I do know that I would be very interested in, um, you know, once they start expanding to, uh, you know, assist them in their classes. I recently got um, my BLS and CPR training, and I'm going to become certified to actually teach CPR classes. What I would like to do is bring a social awareness aspect to the firearms training as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it's a really important facet of self-defense is being able to have situational awareness. Um, Awareness and avoidance should be, you know, number one and number two in any situation. So, um, Going further, I would like to see more of that and try to reach out to that with more women. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Brandy, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate uh, your time and uh, answering the questions. Uh, You seem like you're a pretty squared away shooter, you know, and and focused on on the self-defense. So, um, and you have a lot to offer to the, uh, to, to ladies out there that are, uh, 
wanting to either showing some interest or wanting to learn and or already involved. So keep it up. Sounds like you're on the right thank path. Thank you so much. And uh, best of luck to you. And thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And thank you, you for what you do. Thank you. Thanks. All right. All take right. care. Mm-hmm.